on board the Titanic's maiden voyage, there were 7,000 heads of lettuce. That's a lot of lettuce. <laughs> Starting off strong with two pieces. Ta-da! That is step 189. First class fares ranged from 30 pounds for a standard cabin all the way up to 500 to 1,000 pounds for a parlor suite. Standard cabins ranged in berth, single, double, or triple, and contained things like a dressing table, sofa, wardrobe, and washing area. Yeah. Yeah, baby, yeah. These rooms had additional beds in the form of bunks, electric heaters, outlets, and call buttons that would summon a steward. There was no room service as you would think of it now. Tea and pastries were served in the morning in their rooms, but otherwise, first class passengers had to go to a dining area for food. Oops a daisy, I was supposed to go up one more so that there was a little hanging off like that. Okay, then we flip it over. A lot of the suites on the ship had private entrances, servants' quarters, wardrobes, and ensuite bathrooms. I don't know what to call these, but they're super cool. Kind of reminds me of maybe like a shield in battle. You make a shield wall with multiples side by side. Da da da, shield wall! <laughs> the four parlor suites were the most lavish of the first class accommodations. That was a lovely snap. Very unexpected. <laughs> the parlor suites had two bedrooms, two walk-in closets, a sitting room, and a private bathroom. Two of the four parlor suites also had their own private promenade deck. That is step 200 complete. It is official. The majority of first class had to share bathrooms. They were divided by gender, and passengers had to schedule a time to use the baths with their steward. I'm actually not looking at the instruction book right now because I remember it. Yeah. <laughs> In order to make the fresh water on board last longer, tubs were filled with seawater. Only the private showers had fresh water. Yes, sir. One little baby piece underneath. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's going right. Laundry wasn't done on the ship. Only pressing and polishing services were offered for a fee. Passengers in first class could enjoy a state-of-the-art gymnasium, which had a full-time staff member to assist in proper use of the equipment. Yeah. Nice. All right, next section is something I don't know, but we will find out together. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. We got some french fry pieces going on. And we extend it. Okay. Oh, cool, cool, cool. A couple more barrels at the end. Okay. A variety of rooms to socialize were available, lounge, reception, reading and writing, promenade decks, and a smoking room for the men. They could also okay. play squash, get a cut, shave, or style from the barber, or take a dip in the saltwater pool. The quote-unquote Turkish baths were actually a collection of rooms. A temperate room, cool room, hot room, steam room, electric bath, and shampoo rooms. Okay. Next, we're taking two of these little seat pieces and attaching it to our slope like that okay and we need to do that five times there were multiple restaurants available to the passengers in first class the main dining saloon was the largest dining area so now we have five 
So they go on here in the gaps. So like in here. Weird. The dining saloon had set hours for each meal of the day and its kitchens also served the second class dining saloon. Okay, and now we're gonna do something similar for these. This time we are putting two of these bad boys together and they'll never come apart. <laughs> and then two of these. The first class dining saloon was also used for church service on Sundays. The a la carte was a more luxurious restaurant that served French cuisine and was considered one of the most luxurious rooms on the ship. And now these go like that. Cafe Parisian was an extension of the a la carte restaurant. It was connected to it on the starboard side and had the same servers and menu. All right. Whoa, whoa, stay on there, buddy. Okay. With our studs up. We are going like that. Wow. We do, in fact, have to build two of those. It said times two on that one. So we get to build that right now. <laughs> Could have been doing it twice the whole time. Ah, 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 ah. Oh well. The Veranda Cafe, or Palm Court, was like an open air cafe. It had lots of windows to let in light and doors that opened to the promenade deck. It would likely have been my favorite of the restaurants. That is it for what I have written about the first class accommodations. However, there is a little bit in the book that we haven't read yet, so I'll do that right now. Bridge and funnel. In this second section, the hole reaches its maximum width, 18 modules or roughly 5.6 inches, 144 millimeters. I'm gonna do it differently this time. Inside the hole, you will begin construction of the ship's cross section, including part of the swimming pool, the grand staircase, and one of the Titanic's boiler rooms. You will also build the iconic bridge house and the first of four funnels. Another one. Oh no. Shoot. It happens. There's also a little bit here in the book that says a hidden locking mechanism inside the grand staircase allows the entire ship to connect securely together. We're hitting that one minute left mark, so I am going to ask you to subscribe if you have not and say thank you if you have already. Beautiful. Look at that. Massive. Down here, we're covering up this little bit here, rounding off that edge. Okay, our black smoothies is going right there to finish that. Other side. We're finishing this little round of corner edge bottom part and voila that is it finit okay so today wasn't too crazy fancy but we did get a lot of the outside of this section put on so that's pretty awesome bag eight's gonna be even better it might even be great oh the OGs know.